Welcome to this full review of the updated Jaguar XE. Here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Detailed look on exterior, interior and the driving experience. Please join us as usual in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front here, the Jaguar XE with the facelift, recent update, got slimmer LED lamps here. They also come as standard with LED, optional matrix LED, as we can also see them right here. And I did some night driving and indeed some spots were, were left out in the cars in front of me. And then the other side, the hiving was active, quite nice. Also the LED daytime running light with a nice and slim signature. The color for today is called Storm Gray or Carpathian Gray, depending on the market, how they name it. In the front, we can see a sporty front grille, honeycomb structure, shiny, and, you know, shiny black style, and the Jaguar Growler here in the red background. So overall, again, a sporty styling with Jaguar. 4 meters 67, 15 foot 3 or 184 inches is the length of the Jaguar XE mid-size sedan and wheels come in 18, 19 or 20 inch. Yesterday I'm coming from this side, you know there's the famous Autogefühl drinking game from which side I enter the stage. <laughs> Have fun with that. So here 18 inch wheels, I think that's the best comfort choice because you have more dampening from the tires. The bigger wheels will look more menacing definitely, but I think this one is already enough. Or what do you think? Option is also that we have here the red brake calipers. They deliver a very nice contrast to this one here. Here the, uh, the frames are in this case not in chrome but in black, but you can pick either way different you know I think to this vehicle probably the chrome frames would fit a little bit better I think. Other than that Jaguar is defined by a rather simplistic design you can see here the dropping line is rather here like one here and one there and the typical sedan shape this one is not available as the estate and then the shoulders are formed right here. So, what do you think here? You can see the tail lamps are already beginning at the sides. At the rear, we can see this nice signature dating back to the Jaguar E-Type actually. So, a lot of history just with this form. Then you can see the Autogefühl fake exhaust police can stay at home for today. Real exhaust pipes right here. And also suspension wise, by the way, there's a normal suspension and optional adaptive suspension. We have it built in here today. Let's see how it performs. You can congratulate Jaguar Land Rover on their naming system because the names equal the horsepower figure. D180, 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, then the petrol engines, turbo petrol, 2 liter 4 cylinder, P250, the one you can see here, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, today rear wheel drive 6.5 seconds acceleration, and P300, where the acceleration figure would be 5.7 seconds, and always with all wheel drive. So, no six cylinder anymore, pretty slim engine lineup now. Now to the interior where they have nice design solutions. For example, look at that here. This design line that you no know, raises towards the inside, very cool. Optional Meridian sound system, so I'm going to test that. Soft touch here at the top part of the door, slim door pockets only, then the illuminated Jaguar entry badge, then this new steering wheel, also with new, more premium shifting levers right there, new digital instruments, and a new infotainment screen in the middle, soon going to talk about that. And also soft touch leather red right here at the dashboard. And then the seats right there, today all in black. And before they had also a fabric seat on the offering in some markets, but now they cancelled that. And let me tell you something, Jaguar managers. People who buy a brand that is named after a big cat are usually also lovers of animals and appreciate when no animals are getting killed for their seats or support an industry that is really cruel. Hmm, yeah. So Land Rover has a lot of offerings in this case already. Jaguar actually does not. 
now let's get inside. Of course, a shoe tap to keep this cat clean from the inside. So it's a typical mid-size sedan seating position, quite sporty already, new steering wheel design. It looks also quite fancy. One meters 86 or six foot one. And when I put the seat to the lowest position, still have some head room left. So there's actually no problem. There's also a panoramic roof available, but not built in this car. But the bright ceiling from the inside, that's actually quite cool. Steering wheel electronic adjustment here at the right side column, in this case, for the land, left hand drive car. And so far, it's actually a quite good seating position here. Can't complain about that. So also seems suitable for longer journeys. Interior overview, you can see you know, very thick here, this element by the soft touch and also here, good soft touch materials. New 10 inch screen on the right. You can see the Apple CarPlay integration here, Android Auto also available, soon more deals to the screens. Left side, you start with a small screen with analog instruments and optional, you can get the full digital instruments, 12.3 inch, as you can see them right here. Also soon more deals to that. New steering wheel, again, from this perspective, quite elegant and also good in the size. Right side for setting the cruise control, also heated steering wheel, but these are capacitive buttons, actually. They give some kind of a feedback, still not the biggest fan. However, on the left side here is for the volume wheel, and this is like really cheaply integrated, so it doesn't resonate the rest of the build quality. The voice activation can be activated here, but it's not really that well usable, so it's not a natural voice input. Once again, the new shifting panels, they are really high class, like them, pretty cool. Then in the lower part here, climate unit, still for vent strength, manual, also with a nice clicking sound. And I also like, we still have these manual dials here for the climate control. How they feel, mm, not too bad, but also not premium alike, but at least they're big and they can very well control them also while driving. That's the most important thing, I think. Lower part, inductive charging pad, but no chargers right there. And then here, there's the new shifting lever. It replaces the Jaguar drive selector, which was some kind of unique, but here maybe it you know, feels a little bit sportier. For example, you can also always go to the left in the S shifting mode. Then the gears are turned up a little bit higher. Manual volume knob still for the passenger side. And then there's this aircraft inspired drive mode selector we know from the F type for picking the driving modes talking more about that while driving then we can close this cover here let's open the adaptive cup holders and some space for your key and then uh, another cover here for the armrest when you put it up there's some more space underneath and two USB A chargers it leads to the screen here let's test this Meridian sound system hmm. Yeah, it's actually quite cool. So not the best I've heard or something, but yeah, delivers us a good crystal clear sound. Satisfied with that. Oh, I want to hear some music now. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue right here. So the integration of the car is very well done. And this is then here, the GPS map. So yeah, I think, um, you know, mm, it's quite okay, it could be a little bit more responsive, but overall does the job. Here you can always hop back to the Apple CarPlay, for example. And then there's ambient lighting, of course, setting it to Thomas Blue and all the way up. And you can see it, it illuminates down the inductive charging pad, but also at the air vents and also at the inside of the doors. That's actually quite fancy. Rear view camera is of course also available. There's this fake drone view from above actually and the normal reverse camera here. So it has a actually good resolution and you can very well work with that. And I like the frameless rear mirror. That's actually quite cool. And the view to the rear is of course limited because of the sedan style. And then this digital mirror can help us. So then we have a more clear view to the back. And I think, I get along with this one better than side digital mirrors um, because here it's really improving the visibility. I can see more and also what's directly behind me, um, especially maybe inside the city. Maybe not sure if it's like really that useful on the motorway. Mm, Got to test that, you know, over a longer period of time. But I think at least you can here also pick, you know, you can choose it. If you don't like it, you can turn it off again. Um, unlike with the Audi e-tron, if you once went for the virtual mirrors, then you're left with it. So, um, yeah, of course, only an option. 
But here, once again, I think interesting idea. And by the way, you can even adjust the height here. Pretty interesting, so exactly what view you want to have. And now to the rear. What is quite cool is that we have a soft touch at the inside of the rear door. And then when I'm driving here, it directly fits so that that's okay then for four tall adults. Also headroom wise, so me with one meter, one meter 86 or six with one directly fitting in here. But then it's a little bit strange. You seem to be like a little bit offset here, you know? So like the seat is here, but actually I'm sitting more like here. So that's a little bit strange from the rear bench wise. Hmm, not sure why that is. So not the most comfortable seating position here, but it's surely okay, it works. I should fix it the outside each. Then you have these cup holders, they're also adaptive in the rear. You cannot fold the seats from here, you have to go around. In the middle part, you have even seat heating optional for the rear passengers. And then a massive rear tunnel. Here it's a rear wheel driven platform and therefore sitting in the middle part here. Oh, it's quite tricky. Yeah, gotta have some more yoga courses for that. And yeah, that gets really close also for the headroom. So let's say four tall adults, right? The trunk here also available with the electric opening. 440 liters, of course, typical sedan limited right here. The length is about a meter and the width in the front is a meter right here. But then here inside, it's more like 85 centimeters. So that's really limited. You can see here the piece of luggage I have here and let's try it in a vertical way. Yeah, that also fits. And then to fold the seats, actually you have these here and I couldn't believe at the launch of this vehicle that they meant this seriously. And yeah, I know prototype stage and so on, but no, it stayed this way and I still can't believe it. So like this and either you push your luggage through and fold them by that or you go around and fold like this and when I then measure the length to the seat as I would be driving we come to 1 meters 77. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Jaguar XE. Thomas is back in the Jack. <laughs> oh, here it seems some 911 get unloaded. Hmm. Or maybe towed away. Who knows? So, Jaguar XE facelifted recently P250. That means 250 horsepower. That's finally easy to remember. Really good that they got this new naming strategy. And there is the rear wheel drive or the all wheel drive model. We are driving the rear wheel drive model here. And unless you really need an all wheel drive for constant winter conditions or something, if there are cars with rear wheel drive, get them with rear wheel drive because it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, so you get pushed out of the corner a little bit better. This is also here equipped with torque vectoring. However, they do torque vectoring by braking, so by reducing the speed at the inner wheel inside the corner, it still has a nice effect and gets you, you know, pushed out of the corner a little bit better. So mid-side segment here and Jago is definitely striving in this sporty direction. So more comparable to a BMW as for the driving characteristics here. I mean, it's a normal, normal model here. Nothing is special sport model. Yeah, we have, you know, the sportier yeah, styling. Um, but other than that, yeah, totally norm normal model. And you feel it from the air deficit suspension. That is an option, by the way. But still, it's set out to be not super stiff, but definitely feel this is not supposed to be a boring vehicle, you know? And it's just boring when you drive it really, really slowly. So, steering is very direct. It's pretty light, yes, but I think very precise and good. So, suspension-wise, driving-wise, steering feeling-wise, and so on, this is where the new Jaguars are really, really good at. So it's definitely already a lot of fun, even though when, we're, when you're just cruising, I'm talking about cruising, a minimum consumption, or let's say, I would even say it's a realistic consumption, is about seven liters on one kilometers. That's 34 MPG US or 41 MPG UK. And for a mid-size segment petrol engine, not too bad. Nothing really special, but again, really not too bad. 
So running downhill here now a little bit. We have different driving modes available. We can also set stuff on the steering wheel, controlling the volume while driving. I mean this, yeah, I talked about this um, this wheel here before. That's not really um, convincing. Cruise control is set here on the right side. I'll soon display that on the motorway and we'll also head out to the motorway where we can do a high speed test. Typical auto fuel German autobahn high speed test. That's where, <laughs> yeah, separates the man from the boys, right? So, driving modes, we can actually put it to the eco mode and the throttle input is reduced to help you self save from fuel. Then there's a rain or snow mode confirmed. And if you're standing still then, so that will happen here at the traffic light, so in the snow mode, and then, especially like for rear drive customers, you're standing still and then pick the rain or snow uh, mode. Um, the car actually offers you like a special slip start, you know, so you can, um, not sure why it's not happening at the moment. So this is like the last two or three times did that. So the car is offering you a slip start that um, you can actually get out of a, like icy condition or something. Um, I do remember it um, when I once had a Jaguar XF and I was going up in a completely, completely iced basement garage ramp and like the wheels were spinning and I was just seeing like the cars going sideways like whoa this will get really expensive. So the only thing I could do at that time because such a problem doesn't exist was to put it in in third gear actually and then really push the throttle so and that actually you know got me up that iced uh, ramp so in higher gear you know not too much wheel spin but still a lot of power yeah <laughs> those are the icy tricks from um, yeah Jaguar rear-wheel drive owners some of you know what I mean but here you know that they, they try to um, try to Im Im, you know, implement that a little bit better Let's see if it does it now. So as I said, like last a few times. No, doesn't want to do it now. I don't know. So back to the normal driving mode, which would be called comfort. And then there's the dynamic mode. Yeah, everything is going red, guys. Yeah, that's it. And then the RPMs are turned up a little bit higher. Just here at 60 to 80. And that's all we are. Sorry, 60 to 90 happens. So, fully back G class here. Recent generation. Oh, just married. Congratulations. And we get to the left side because we can then soon drive faster. So, the engine didn't sound too bad, right? We'll soon do another high speed test, then you can check it out once more. First of all, to the assistant systems. So far, I think 80 kilometers now are. Like you know, 50 miles. Good, good. Now noise insulation wise, so it's not too loud. Setting the cruise control here on the steering wheel, and I can also activate or deactivate the lane keeping assist. Now always a good test. Is it possible for this vehicle to keep the lane in the construction side? Okay, this I'm not trying to think about now. So let's see. Uh, yeah, so it seems to be rather a late system, but. The thing is always, you know, as for the assistant system's function, there it is. That wasn't me, that was the steering wheel. I'm not doing anything on the steering wheel. Uh, <laughs> not trusting it. So it seems to react quite late, but then again, that's not necessarily always bad because that also means that you have a little bit more, you know, room to play with, you know. This new steering wheel they put in here, yeah, you know, I'm not a fan of capacitive buttons. I really rather prefer the real deal. But the grip you have here and then these new, more premium-like shifting pedals, together with the new styling of the steering wheel. There it is. Thank you, assist. I think I really like the new steering wheel and also the steering feel, so that's actually, um, it's actually very good, you know. Also interesting to look at this river hoop then here, this design element in the front that goes all the way of the vehicle. You remember it maybe from the Jaguar XJ, where this was often done in wood, which looked really, really cool. 
yeah, Jaguar XJ, a car that was never really understood. It drove phenomenal. Um, was also one of the lightest in the class, all aluminum chassis before anyone else, but was hardly bought ever up to today um, because of that very unique rear. Yeah. <laughs> so now the Jaguar XE is, let's say, a car that more appeals to uh, you know a wider audience. Definitely, it's not too much screaming out. Jaguar always had a very nice design, and the same way it's also styled right here. And Indeed, the driving is holding what the design is promising. This very sporty characteristics, lane change here, easily done. Very good feeling in the steering wheel once again. You see here in the normal driving mode, I need to push a little bit more. That also does the kick down, but at any time you can also just use the shifting pedals to go down a gear yourself. Blind spot monitor is right there inside the mirrors. Well done. We know the system from a couple of other manufacturers and it's really good to have that. This car is also equipped with the driver's assistance package. I would also advise you to go for this, for example, then to get once again the blind spot monitor warning you because the B pillar is quite thick and also, you know, like I put it in an angle where I can hardly see anything anymore. Other than that, to the rear and to the sides, can't complain about the view, so that's actually quite fine. And now we're heading to our high-speed test which will, yeah, do, especially to our friends in the US, be the most important part because you can't do this <laughs> in the US unless you want to be ending up in jail or, yeah, or even worse. So, getting off here, then I'll also test the brakes. Once again, a good controlled feeling. So it's really a lot of fun to drive this car also at higher speeds. The steering doesn't feel most natural, but it's still very precise and direct. Also, when we're going here, like, you know, slalom, like, and so on. Red traffic light. I'll also put it to dynamic mode so we can have the best acceleration possible. And let's see if we really feel this, this push from the rear, from the, you know, from the rear-wheel drive only drivetrain. Of course, you know, in the corners, it's always a little bit more fun than you would just have, you know, when you just have the rear-wheel drive, the all-wheel drive always pulls you from the front a little bit and this is more, let's say, is less oversteering and therefore also less fun. Well, of course, it's a safety factor and yeah, talking about these basement garages, that's of course also helping for that, right? So we're doing flying start. Start will start about yeah, 40 kilometers an hour. I'll reduce the speed just a little bit. See, there's no one behind us. Safety is always first here at Autogefühl. It's the most important thing. So we are heading more 40 kilometers an hour and let's go. Blop, that's 170 kilometers an hour. I think that's enough for now. And yeah, noise insulation is not too bad. Um, and the acceleration was quite decent, and also the sound, you know, it's a four-cylinder engine, but for a four-cylinder engine, I think we had a quite nice sound in here. Lane changes at higher speed, car is very stable, but the steering is like pretty aggressive, you know? That's what I meant about the not natural feeling. It's like an Alfa Giulia a little bit, but, but pre-facelift Alfa Giulia. Look at that, I mean, it's like, whoa! Seen that? I mean, it's like little steering command and whew, I mean, I like it when you don't have to steer that much, as we know, for example, like from, from Audi vehicles or something. But here, you know, it's, you hit a certain point and suddenly the vehicle goes like, Phew! wow. So um, I think they have to rethink that steering characteristic. Um, yeah, but it's like one-to-one -one with the pre-facelift Alpha Julia. Again, really fun to do it. But the you know, connection, the natural connection is, uh, yeah, that could be a little bit better for sure. So we're heading to the tunnel. Let's see how it looks like at night. Going back to the normal driving mode. Once again, setting cruise control so I don't exceed the speed. So especially as for the driving part, I think well done, Jaguar. And I mean, does the facelift do like, you know, like a big difference in this respect? Oof. Yeah, I don't think like the driving changed that much. 
um, Facebook again was more about, I told you earlier, about the infotainment screens and so on, slight updates here and there, and yeah, sadly, no animal skin seat alternative anymore, really a step backwards, well, sometimes it is when product managers not really know what they're doing or if they don't listen to customers, and yeah, getting off the motorway here now, yeah, <laughs> sorry, well, it was a little bit too fast, but it's always, you know, triggering you. Ah, come on, you can go a little bit faster. It's fun, right, Thomas? So, thanks for the ride, small cat. And now to our conclusion for today with the Jaguar XE updates here, especially from the exterior, slimmer headlamps, so it looks a little bit more modern, definitely. On the interior, quite good that we have a new infotainment system software, for example, and also bigger screens, so these updates are surely good. Downgrade is that there's no animal skin alternative anymore, so it was before there on some markets, so they need to put more effort on that. They do it on the Land Rover side, but obviously not on the Jaguar side. Other than that, the build quality has been improved further and further. It's not like the king discipline of the Jaguar XE, but I think it's still quite decent. And the driving, that is actually quite good because it is very agile to drive, the steering is very precise and it is a very fun driving experience. Also, there's a good compromise of comfort and sportiness, so that was really top-notch. And the fuel economy was also somewhat standard, so also nothing specially bad. So a very interesting sporty choice still here in the mid-size segment and I would like to invite you to the other reviews we did with the competitors. We linked them in the video description also in the pinned comment. What do you think about the Jaguar XE? Tell me in the comments. See you next time.